Hello and welcome to the Rob Burgess Show. I'm of course your host, Rob Burgess. On this, our 131st episode, our guest is me. My first solo episode of this podcast was episode 41, the second was episode 62, the third was episode 84, and the fourth was episode 117. And on episode 100, I was joined by my wife and regular guest, Ash Burgess, who interviewed me. I am a nine-time award-winning journalist whose work has appeared in print, radio, online, and television. I'm currently news editor at Nuvo, where I also was a freelance reporter and photographer back in 2010 and 2011. Before that, I was managing editor of The Indiana Lawyer. I have previously worked as city editor slash opinion page editor slash editorial board member at the Kokomo Tribune. And before that, as a reporter at WFHB, Times Mail, The Reporter Times, Ukiah Daily Journal, and Ukiah Valley Television. Oh yeah, and I'm also the proprietor of the podcast, The Rob Burgess Show. And now, on to the show. What's up, everybody? It's Rob. It's me, back once again. Just like you knew, it's what you thought it wasn't. It's the solo episode. Back at you. Number five, f- fifth one of these. Last time it was episode 117 on August 2nd. And, you know, I just got so much to catch you up on here. On August 16th, I was part of a, an initiative uh, started by Marjorie Pritchard, who is the deputy managing editor of the Boston Globe's opinion page. Uh, this was an effort by over 300 newspapers in the country to band together and write columns and editorials in expression of the free press and support thereof, the First Amendment and all that uh, for the for all the obvious reasons um, so I was a part of that and my column was called we are not the enemy and I was subsequently uh, contacted by Shaylee Shah, I hope I'm saying your name right, uh, Community Relations Co-op at Boston Globe Media. Uh, she contacted Nuvo and said, A sincere thanks for participating in the Free Press Project. The Boston Globe is currently in the process of turning the editorials written last week into a book or magazine. We'd like to include your editorial in the compilation and need a few things from you in order to do that. We're also updating the Globe's website to include more editorials. So I was obviously thrilled, honored, uh, all, the, all of the above about that. Um, so important, that project, and I was very honored to be a part of that, as I wrote in the column. Um, but anyway, I, I put something up on, on my uh, website, this Burgess, about that, so you can read all about that. And just a few days after that, uh, a whole other situation jumped off uh, when I wrote a story on August 22nd uh, headlined Colts announcer Bob Lamey resigns after use of n-word uh, subhead is Colts confirm incident call it a serious mistake so you can read that and uh, I was on uh, sounding off podcast uh, with uh, Brandon Chapman regular guest of the show I'm gonna get back with him uh, in just a bit we're gonna set something up he'll be on back on this podcast real soon um, but anyway he was uh, kind enough to ask me on to talk about that story and I uh, went on there and, and I have that on uh, this Burgess as well I posted some about that Let's see since then I have been really working hard on the midterm election voters guide that I did for Nuvo. That had candidates from congressional, state, and county races. And I just, I tried to ask everybody I could, everyone who was on the ballot, write-ins, everybody. Uh, Judges, you know, you can read all about that. But yeah, we answered people's questions and took them to the candidates. And I'm just, you know, really proud of that. And I think it did, went really well. And I think we all did a, a great job on it. So that led to my being invited to be on the media panel at the L. Keith Bullen Symposium on American Politics at Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis on December 4th. Uh, and it was the first, you know, the first panel of the day. And, uh, I was asked to be there by Aaron Dusso, department chair and associate professor of political science to be part of the media panel. Um, it's held every two years at Indiana university, Purdue university, Indianapolis. Um, it's described as, uh, bringing together politicians, political staffers, journalists, and scholars to discuss the latest election and look to the next one. 
Uh, the one-day event cuts through the sound bites to talk about politics in a more meaningful way. Each symposium includes a media panel, presentations, and a discussion with the Indiana Party chairs. Since 1998, the Bullen Symposium has been the premier forum for active discussions of American political parties, elections, and other important issues relating to the political system. First held in 1998, the Bullen Symposium has had many prominent participants, including former U.S. Senator Richard Luger, former U.S. Representative Lee Hamilton, former Indianapolis Mayor Greg Ballard, and current Indiana Governor Eric Holcomb. Political reporters who have participated include Jim Shella, Amber Stearns, Amos Brown, Leslie Weidenbender, and Tony Cook. So I also posted that something about that on this Burgess, so you can read about that too. So I also got some very exciting Christmas gifts from Ash. Um, I know that she made a video on her channel. She's been doing Vlogmas, and if you haven't watched those videos now, you should. Uh, just look up Ash Burgess on YouTube, and I'm sure you'll find what you're looking for. Um, anyway, she has uh, really hit it out of the park this year because there was this uh, Nintendo emulator, I guess you'd call it. Uh, it's all the, well, not all the, but 30 games, including some of the most prominent ones of the Nintendo original system. Uh, there's versions of this for, uh, I believe, N64 and Sega. And uh, yeah, anyway, Atari, I believe, also has one. But anyway, this is the one for Nintendo. And of course, I had a Nintendo as a kid. So it's been uh, really interesting to play back on some of the stuff that I haven't thought about in 20 years, but somehow I still know all the codes, and I still like remember all the little things to go behind things and the shortcuts and uh, ways to skip over parts that you've already beat, um, which is very useful because there's no saving the game. You can copy down codes sometimes, like in Punch-Out. By the way, it's not Mike Tyson's Punch-Out in this version. It's just Punch-Out. I think this said copyright 19 1987 and then re-copyright 1990, which I'm imagining because I had the original version that was Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. Uh, but this, on this new system that Ash got me, is just Punch-Out. So I'll be interested to see if I ever get to the end who the final boss is, because they've obviously, you know, we all know what happened in between there. I don't even have to look up the year that that happened, but that's really exciting. And uh, there's games I've never played before on it. Uh, of course, there's Super Mario Brothers 1, 2, and 3. Um, just, by the way, just what a monumental leap... Uh, Super Mario Brothers 3 was. 1 and 2. 2 is just bizarre. And 1 is just so rudimentary that by the time you get to 3, it's like such a breath of fresh air because that's what I had been waiting for. I think I just started with the original and worked up to 3 when they'd come out. So 3 was like, that was next level. And I'd played that one a lot. And it's good to know partially too that like the ones that I had that I thought looked fun were actually the most fun ones for the most part. I mean, there's been a few here and there that I haven't played before that, you know, I'm like, ooh, this is good. But for the most part, I don't feel like I was missing out on some, you know, and this also covers many years of the Nintendo empire too. So people didn't really know what to do with it at first and they didn't know, uh, it, you know, dimensions and stuff or however they do game physics. Like they didn't realize how to do that. It was just all very like, it was like an arc flat arcade screen type feel. Um, I've been enjoying going back through there. If I wasn't recording this right now, I would definitely be playing that and I will probably play that later too. But Ash also got me some clothing. I got some jeans, which I'm very thankful for. They're very, very, made of very nice material. Um, they uh, give a little more give than some of the jeans I've had before, so I'm not as worried about them running afoul. <laughs> as we've talked about before, uh, there were jeans that I received last year that were a li little bit too tight, um, but I, I think these have more promise. So, um, Anyway, since the last time I talked to you, like I said, I was episode 117 alone. Uh, we've had some really great guests and some really great episodes, so uh, you ought to go back and listen to them, uh, especially as you start the new year and all your podcasts are, I'm sure, on vacation and not giving you content. Who's giving you content? The Rob Burgess Show is giving you content. That's right. And we got archives to spare for days, for miles. Um, Episode 118, Arjun Singh Sethi. Uh, he wrote a really interesting book, uh, American Hate. Uh, check that out. It was a really good conversation. Uh, of course, most frequent guest, Jonathan Fowler, episode 119. Uh, Jonathan uh, was speaking to me about The Wire, and I believe that was our last episode about The Wire where we were watching it, and I think that was like a wrap-up fifth, fifth season episode. And then that was interesting because it was immediately followed by Jonathan Abrams, who wrote a book about The Wire on oral history um 
called All the Pieces Matter, and you really should read that if you're any kind of Wire fan at all. Um, episode 121, regular guest Leon Nafok, uh, who just you know completed a great season of slow burn and is moving on, I understand, at, at his, in his career, so uh, kudos to him. Uh, episode 122, Jason Stanley, uh, he wrote a book about fascism that is uh, very relevant. Uh, episode 123, uh, Carlos Dangler, back for a third time, uh, was uh, kind enough to read his uh, essay he wrote uh, about gentrification uh, that uh, had appeared in print previously, but he then, just for the Rob Burgess show, mind you, uh, went back into the studio and recorded that. So how do you like that? Uh, that's that's the extra thing you get there with the Rob Burgess show sometimes. Um, episode 124, we had Ash back for another episode. I believe that was about uh, Halloween. Uh, episode 125, uh, Bradley W. Hart wrote a really interesting book uh, called Hitler's American Friends. Uh, definitely uh, would check that out, would recommend. Uh, episodes 126 and 127 were Jonathan again. Uh, we had uh, episode 128, Sarah Kenzier uh, coming back for a six episode. Uh, that's always glad to have her uh, th- come through. Uh, episode 129, Edward J. Watts uh, wrote a really interesting book called Mortal Republic. Uh, and it's about how uh, Rome fell into tyranny and, and what lessons we can draw today, obviously. Uh, episode 130 was Ash back again. Uh, that was a Christmas Eve, came out eventually on Christmas Eve to kind of cap off her doing Vlogmas. And uh, if I haven't mentioned already, you should definitely go check those out. Ash Burgess on the YouTube. Um, so yes, 2018 in the books. This may be the last episode of the year. Um, thank you so much for listening. Please continue to listen. Uh, we're only making improvements. Uh, things are getting better. Uh, <laughs> I promise. Um, we got, you know, new equipment. I've been trying to use Skype more. I think it helps the audio quality. Um, you know, I like the like low fi low tech feel of the, you know, listening on a wiretap, but you know, Skype is a little more even, I gotta say, even if it has its flaws too, but we're going to, you know, we, I'm going to continue to try to, you know, make improvements. Uh, you know, I see what other people are doing. I want to do that too. So, uh, definitely doing more episodes, going to try to get these out on a more regular schedule. Um, you know, I, I counted it up and I'd done, I think 43, maybe if I'm being generous, maybe 42 this year. So I was like 10 short, uh, you know, thank you for your patience this year. I will step it up. I've got many episodes to make it up with, and, uh, I'm really excited because I got some great episodes coming. Let's get to what music I've been listening to lately. All right. So I'm taking a different tactic this time. I've shared, I've shared with you some of my YouTube watching history, which is a very honest portrayal of what I've actually been listening to as opposed to what I'd like you to think I've been listening to. So I have been really excited to read this Beastie Boys book that just came out the other month. And it's put out by the two uh, obviously surviving members of the Beastie Boys, Ad Rock and Mike D. Uh, MCA, rest in peace, is no longer with us. Uh, but I have been listening to the Beastie Boys a whole bunch. So that is a lot of this history lately. I won't bore you with the titles, but uh, let's just say I've been listening to a lot of Beastie Boys because they were on WTF with Mark Marin, uh, and I got a chance to look at the book a little bit. Uh, and it's very interesting, and I really want to read it. E40, got some be legit Reverend Horton Heat, got some Christmas music in here. All right, simply having a wonderful Christmas time is a great song, and I don't care what anyone says. It gives me in the Christmas mood more than most songs do. Also, there's a great Paul McCartney coming up remix on the DJ Disco Cat channel you should really check out. Okay, well, we got a lot of Disco Perfection versions as usual. I've, I've explained to you before that Disco Perfection versions are the best versions in general. Okay, uh, watch some really good, uh, listen to some really good Tiny Desk concerts, Anderson Pack, John Moreland, Jason Isbell, uh, Sturgill Simpson, he's just great. Uh, a couple of Ween live shows, a couple more Sun- Sunday Valley, Sturgill Simpson's old band in which he plays guitar like nobody's business. Uh, Mighty Mighty Boss Tones, let's face it, full album. I had some Ice Cube in here. I think I heard an interview with Ice Cube. Maybe listen to some Ice Cube. I had some Dwight Yoakam and Gretchen Wilson, interestingly. So, Curtis Blow, Christmas Rap, Mac Dre, Tribe Called Quest, Hank Williams, a lot of Hank Williams, UGK, Juicy J, Project Pat, 
Delvin Lamar Organ Trio. Lamar is two R's at the end. That was a good one. Canned Heat on the road again. Neil Young. Tried to listen to Slipknot. I'd never listened to Slipknot really. My brother had the CD when we were growing up, but I just I don't I don't know. No thanks. So that's a no for me. Or Neil Young, Curtis Mayfield, Beck, some Foo Fighters, Dead Prez, The Coup. Oh my gosh, the the Sorry to Bother You soundtrack. You have to see that movie. Movie of the year, easily. ACDC, some Scott Storch beats, MOP, Ghostface Killa, uh, RZA, we had some Jizza, a lot of children's music, <laughs> uh, Diggable Planets, Tribe Called Quest, Raekwon, Killer Mike, Stevie Wonder, oh my goodness, a lot of the same stuff. Isley Brothers, The Gap Band, Patrice, Pat, Patrice Russian, Bobby Brown on our own from Ghostbusters 2, Pokey Lafarge, ACDC, Will Smith getting jiggy with it, still DRE, Extended Instrumental, Busta Rhymes, Nightmare Before Christmas soundtrack. You can tell when my kids are with me for some of these. Devin the Dude, Action Bronson, Tom Petty, Grammatic, Run the Jewels. It's in Hall- we're into the Halloween music now, so I can tell when I was listening to this. Be Legit, E-40, Mac Dre, all the usual suspects from the Bay Area. Flogging Molly, a little bit. Little John, C. Murder, Sally Cell, Outcast, Clips, Cake, Lemon by... Rihanna and Pharrell and N.E.R.D. Gorillas, The Birds, Presidents of the United States of America, Bob Dylan. If you look up Elston Gunn on YouTube, thank me later. Some good live stuff. Cypress Hill, Bloodhound Gang, Frank Sinatra, Primus, The Doors, West Side Connection, Weird Al Yankovic. Uh, a lot of a lot of good reggae in there. Bob Marley. House of Pain, oh my gosh, The Hot Boys, Juvenile, Cool in the Gang, Mark Morrison, Hall & Oates, Jamiroquai, Hot Boys, Cab Calloway, Benny Goodman, Santo and Johnny, Dave Brubeck, oh my goodness, more Will Smith, Oasis, Kid and Play, a lot of Oasis, Beastie Boys again, R.E.M., Prodigy, yeah, I just see. I just listen to a lot of the same stuff over and over again. T Pain, <laughs> Limp Biscuit. It's true. The rumors are true. Rihanna, Dr. Dre, Mike Jones, Shouty Low, Hooker and Heat, the album, Ooh, Howlin' Wolf, James Brown, Tom Waits, Rolling Stones, Cherish, Do It, Do It. Destiny's Child, Jumpin' Jumpin', Eric Burden and War, Method Man, Street Life, Michael Jackson, Off the Wall, Disco Perfection, of course, Bare Naked Ladies, One Week, <laughs> Jay-Z, Public Service Announcement, Sierra Featuring, Ludacris, oh, that's pretty much everything I've listened to, so yeah, I know I didn't say a lot of specific song names, but I, I listen to a lot of music. A lot, a lot of music. Because so sometimes I just zone out and listen to like music while I'm writing, and I'll end up listening to stuff I don't even know how I started listening to. But anyway, that's enough for me. Uh, keep listening. Thank you for listening. Uh, I'll be back with more. And uh, let's have a great 2019. Peace.
If you enjoy this podcast, there are several ways to support it. Join the Rob Burgess Show mailing list. Go to tinyletter.com forward slash the Rob Burgess Show and type in your email address. Then respond to the automatic message. I have a Patreon account, which can be found at patreon.com forward slash Rob Burgess Show Patreon. I hope you'll consider supporting in any amount. Also, please make sure to comment, follow, like, subscribe, share, rate, and review everywhere the podcast is available, including iTunes, YouTube, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play Music, Facebook, Twitter, Internet Archive, TuneIn, and RSS. The official website for the podcast is www.therobburgessshow.com. You can find out more about me by visiting my website, www.thisburgess.com. And if you have something to say, record a voice memo on your smartphone and send it to the Rob Burgess Show at gmail.com. Include voice memo in the subject line of the email. Until next time.